Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and this is episode 14 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. And it's somewhat of an addendum to uh, a couple of previous retrocasts that I've done. Uh, now, first off, uh, I got my Warp Engine card back from Paul Renendez, uh, who's here in the States in California. Now, I'd, I'd mentioned in the past I had a uh, Warp Engine card with a 40 megahertz 040 on it, two RAM chips that gave it up to 64 megs of RAM. It was designed for the Amiga 3000, but I'd been using it my Amiga 4000 for months. Works, works, working fine. But it did not have a socket for the 040 processor. So I couldn't take my 060 upgrade chip, the 040 to 060 upgrade chip, and stick it in there because there was no socket. Now, I'm not afraid of a soldering iron, but when it comes to desoldering things like that, that's not my cup of tea. I'm so I sent it to Paul Renendez. My goodness, he did a fantastic job. I'm going to put a photo up here of the work that he did. It's just incredible. So use Paul. You'll find him on the Commodore Amiga group on Facebook. If you need recapping done in the States, soldering work, he's just fantastic. Um, he also took the two SIM cards, SIM uh, sockets that were in there, and added two more. So I have a total of four SIM cards. So now my, o my warp engine is up to 80 megahertz 060 it's up to 114 megabytes of ram including the ram on the motherboard the ram i have in the warp engine and the two megs of chip ram that i have 114 megs and it just works absolutely beautifully i'm just so impressed now i did have some issues that were pretty strange when i first Put the board in my machine i was still using my ide drive i have a 10 gig ide drive and uh booted up just fine i was able to use it just fine worked great that's what i had been using for the past couple of weeks while he has my inside my board um, but of course i wanted to switch back to my really fast 15,000 rpm scuzzy drives that i have in my falcon case right here i've got a 74 gig drive uh, it's worked flawlessly with OS 3.9 uh, for months and months and months. Are not even hardly even any issues at all. Just recognize a big 60 gig partition works fine. Uh, when I upgraded to OS 3.1.4, I did have some issues. Okay, I had to select Direct SCSI, and I just had a couple little issues. But then at that time, I sent the board off to Paul and uh, hadn't thought about it much. Well, when I got it back, went to go and hook up my SCSI devices, and uh, it wouldn't recognize the CPU card, the Warp Engine card. It, uh, when I power it on, let me show you what I'm talking about here. When you power it on, there's two tones you hear. That first tone is the AD516 card. That second tone, that bong, that's the, the Warp Engine card telling me that it's ready to go. I would hear the AD516 card, but I either would never hear the bong of the CPU card, or it would take like five minutes and then it would bong and, and, and come up. Occasionally it would boot to my four gigabyte boot partition on my SCSI drive. More often than not, it just black screen, nothing. So first I'm thinking, okay, something's wrong with my CPU card. So I seed it and reseed it and reseed all the chips and, and, and put it in there and then it would boot. And when it booted, it worked okay. It, you know, I was able to see my drives uh, and it, it worked fine. It was super fast. The SCSI drives are super fast. But then I would shut it down and go to restart it another time. Nothing. Take me two or three hours of fiddling with it to get it to, to even boot. Uh, so I knew there was an issue. I thought that it was because I don't have the actual 3.1.4 ROMs. I'm using the, the, the modules, load modules uh, from Hyperion. Uh, I don't have the new ROMs yet. Uh, maybe it wasn't seeing the drives properly because what would happen occasionally 
is it would try to boot and it would say load module failed uh, and that it was trying to verify one of the hard drives. Now you can imagine Amiga OS, uh, any Amiga OS, trying to run a verify on a 60 gig hard drive partition. I would let the thing sit overnight and it would be done the next day. It would take like 12, 14 hours to do the uh, verification. But then as long as I didn't turn it off, flawless. Worked absolutely perfect. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll solve this uh, because I assumed it was an issue with the warp engine running under Amiga OS 3.1.4. They upgraded SCSI device, the software, no problem at all, but obviously they didn't upgrade, upgrade um, warp engine that device, which is the driver that drives the SCSI drive. So must be a conflict somewhere. Reduce the size of all of my partitions to under eight gigs, same issue. Driving me crazy, okay? So I started thinking, well, it, it did boot at first when I had the IDE drives in there. Um, so I got online and I started doing a little research and I found one guy who had done the same upgrade as me, the 040 to 060 upgrade, and he said that he had the same issue. One out of five times it would boot, the rest of the time, nothing. No rhyme, no reason. And then just in passing he said, some people think it might be a conflict between uh, the IDE and the SCSI when you upgrade to an 060 chip. I thought, well, all right, I'll try. So I take my 10 gig IDE drive, which had Amiga OS 3.9 with the 3.1.4 upgrades. You saw me do my uh, upgrade video on that. Stuck that in the machine, kept the SCSI drives attached, turned it on, bam, just like that. Boots, works perfect every single Time without a headache. It'll see huge partitions. This is my SCSI drive right here. Now, uh, it's hard to read from where we're at, but this is about a 30 gigabyte uh, partition, no, uh, about a 35 gigabyte partition. Um, sees it absolutely beautiful. Runs fantastic. I've got a couple other. Here's another 8 gig partition. Here's, uh, there's a couple 4 gig and a couple other 8 gig partitions in my SCSI drive. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Sees them great as long as I boot from IDE. This never happened when I was running with my 040 chip with OS 3.9 or my 040 chip. I believe, yeah, for the most part, when I was running 3.1.4, but that was only for a couple of days. Um, so it, it's got to be a conflict with the warp engine running with an 060 chip the onboard SCSI and the onboard ID of the IDE of the A4000. They're just button heads somehow. So if anybody else has this equipment, same thing, they run into issues, you might just have to boot from an IDE drive. For all I know, I could just put a blank IDE drive in there with nothing on it, as long as it's in the chain, and then boot to my SCSI workbench. Maybe that worked fine. Maybe I'll try it out. But I'll tell you what, this thing is so unbelievably fast. Let me show you. Okay, so this little guy right now, let me show you what she's got in it. You can just see from opening up Windows how unbelievably fast it is. Okay, so we've got an 060 running at 79.3 megahertz, it's a revision five. I didn't think this would run at 80 megahertz, but it runs perfect and it stays nice and cool. 060 FPU, uh, CyberVision 64 3D card, 114 megabytes of fast memory and two megabytes of chip memory. Uh, see, there's my warp engine, my Sunrise card, my CyberVision, and then my, uh, my XSurf card. <coughs> And everything, everything I throw at this just boots up and loads up like nobody's business. Uh, here's some examples. Here's ProWrite. In seconds, this thing opens up in, in, in fractions of a second. Let's watch a little video here. So this is 
Breath of the Wild, um, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is an MPEG-1 video. Uh, 192 by 144 is what this is formatted at. Uh, I've got it set on double zoom here. We can even go full screen. Thing keeps up with both audio and video just beautifully. Now obviously this is going to look better on your uh, fast i7 at home, but you know this is a 25 year old Amiga and look how it's handling full screen video with this chip in here. The history of the royal family of Hyrule is also the history of the Calamity Ganon. Oh. So I'd have to say that's pretty darn impressive. Now, I have some heat issues. Right now, with the top off, this thing is cool as a cucumber. Uh, I've got two fans in here, one CPU fan on there, and then I have another fan mounted vertically, blowing straight on the 060 chip. As long as I keep the top off, the thing is just like an ice cube in there. I, there's no heat at all. When I put the top on, I had it on for maybe 30, 40 minutes the other day. It gets really toasty in there, and I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. I don't want to mess anything up by overheating it. So right now I'm running it with the top off, but I'm going to experiment and see if I can find another solution for getting the hot air out of the Amiga 4000 and keep everything a little cool because it's pretty cramped in there with all those cables. The second addendum is my video the other day on vendors, Amiga vendors. Uh, there's one of them that I missed. Uh, it's sordan.ie, S-O-R-D-A-N.ie, www of course. Um, now the reason that I pulled that one out is when I first looked at the website uh, doesn't really say anything about Amigas on there, but it's got this link down there that says um, retro computers or, or something as associated with that. You click on that, there's like 80 or 90 things this guy carries. Good website, tons of electronic stuff on there, not just Amiga, but it's worth checking out too. He's a good guy. So in a nutshell, I am perfectly happy and perfectly content with my old four, my 4000 machine, my A4000 machine with its 060 processor, tons of RAM, tons of hard drive space. I don't really care that it's booting from an IDE drive because that's just booting workbench anyways. And when I get in and I start utilizing programs and playing videos and, and MP3 files, that's all pulling it off the SCSI drives, which are clocked in about 10 megabits, uh, megabytes per second. They're really fast. So perfectly happy, perfectly content with that. Um, so, that will do it for this week's episode of the 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast. Now, don't forget, I have a channel that's also dedicated to 8-bit Commodore computers. Uh, I've got quite a little collection going, ranging from VIC-20s to plus-4s up to uh, Commodore 128s and all, the, and all the pieces that go along with that. And so take a look at the Chicken Head Chronicles. It's, it's on the same channel as 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. I just have them in a separate playlist. But take a look. I have a lot of fun with that. Uh, but until next time, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing signing up.